Hello, and we are back today with another top-down only style mix, but this time, unlike last time we did it in the box 100%, we are going to do it only with hardware today and on my SSL Origin. So, the question I'm going to pose is, how good of a mix can we get on a complex song with only fader balance, right, on a console, and some cool top-down mixing tools and fun stuff in the rack? The song that we're going to be mixing today is the same one that I did in the last video. Um, it's by a band called Rival, and the song is Odds. It's in your URM.academy account here. Click on Portfolio Builder, come down, and you can download this session right here and mix it along with me. Real quick, I just want to apologize for the audio. I'm on a lavalier mic today because I need to actually stand up and walk around the room and stuff. And if I had a boom arm in front of me with a Shotgun mic, I wouldn't be able to mix on the board. So bear with that. That being said, we are going to have fun today because we're going to get to try out some really cool, unique gear that you've never heard before. Okay, so since we're mixing into a console, it's a little bit different this time. Let me show you how I've got this set up in the DAW, then on the board, then I'm going to show you the hardware that we're going to use, and then we're going to actually mix it. Got all that? All right. So first things first, um, I've got my console laid out. I've got a 32 channel console. So I've got everything laid out. You can see here like origin uh, one, two left, right. And I've just done this in sequential order, three, four, five, six. I got these two guitars because they're on, on the same track. Again, when we have a limited track count, the origin is 32 channels. We need to be able to simplify some tracks. So this one's on seven, eight, nine, 10, nine, 10, nine, 10, nine, 10 and nine, 10. So you can see I've grouped lead guitars, uh, rhythm guitars, clean guitars in different sections of the song. These are all going to go to 11, 12 here. These are all background vocals. Then we've got uh, 13, 14. These are going to be like our stereo dubs. We've got our main vocal on 15, our other main vocal on 16 at the end of the song. We also have the extra vocals here, which are going to be on 15, just because we have the extra track real estate here. Coming down here, I've got my kick on 19 on my snare top and bottom bust to one thing here on 20 the triggers are going to go to 17 and 18 and the toms and i'm all just got them all in one group of faders because that makes it a lot easier we have a kick and a snare trigger um the left overhead right overhead and hi-hat are going to go to 21 22 um, then we've got the cymbal swells and uh, rooms. Those are going to go to 21, 23, 24, sorry, 21, 22 on the cymbal swells. Coming down here, we've got a bunch of posts. So we've got shakers on 25, 26. Uh, we've got piano on 29, 30 and 31, 32 um, are the textures. So let's head over to the mini cam and go take a look at the board. And if we scroll on the board, you can see this is mirrored. So I've got everything labeled. For example, I've got my sub bass, my bass. Um, guitar cleans, um, sorry, guitar leads in the post chorus, uh, clean guitars, rhythm guitars, lead guitars. Some of these are kind of left over from other mixes I've been working on. So I didn't totally label everything, even though I should have, uh, for this mix, particularly I've got my auxiliary vocals, my background vocals, my lead vocals, one and two. Um, this is just busing that doesn't matter yet. Um, so I've got my shells, which are really like my samples, my kick snare, my overheads, my rooms, my shakers my pianos um, here and the texture. So you can see everything is labeled and laid out here on the origin. And we're going to do it all in the long faders. Now, since we're doing top down mixing only, we're going to have the same problem that we had in the box. And that problem is we don't have effects for the vocal. So what I did is I've got all this hardware over here and all of this is set up where I basically have an even tied eclipse um, doing like the left right micro pitch thing. I got a slap here on this SPX 990. I've got this lexicon on um, PCM 92 just on some large hall. Um, the symphonic, which is like a spreader here on the SPX 90. And then I've got a uh, tap tempo de mod delay here, quarter note kind of thing tapped on the line six echo pro. So those all come back right over here on these faders. So I got the, and, sorry, and there's an AMS down there uh, for another reverb. So I got the AMX, I got the lexicon, I got the eclipse, I've got the line six, I've got the 990 and I've got the SPX 90. And then we can easily just add effects on whatever we want, which is cool. So that's dialed in and that is set up. So we're gonna, that is the only thing other than top down mixing that we're gonna be doing in faders. So there are effects, but again, this is consistent with how I did this. Okay, let's head over and look at the tools. Now, before we look at the actual processors, there's one thing to note. I actually have my busing set up right now where I've got an like an instrumental bus and an acapella bus. So all my instruments are going to this channel. 
and all of my vocals are going to this channel. On this instrument bus, I do have a compressor and a EQ on it, a Poltec. So basically think about that as like, this is my master bus, but sometimes I wanna take my compressor outside of this chain. So that's why it's on a bus right here. Uh, and that's just how I like to mix most of the time. And this is how I've got this particular song set up. So the top down is gonna be on the instrumental for a few pieces, and then the rest of it's gonna be on the entire mix. I didn't want to reroute all this stuff and repatch it and spend all day doing it. So forgive me for doing that. Okay, let's head over and look at the processing. So my main instrumental compressor right here is the Allen Smart C2. Um, just because I'm not going to come zoom back in on this later, I'm going to show you the settings that I've got right now. I've got a 3 to 1 on the ratio. I've got the attack set at 30, the release at 0.1. I like a slow attack, fast release. Not on all songs, I change this sometimes, but for this, it's going to be cool. And then I've got this Gain Lab Empress, which is a Poltec style EQ. And um, I'm not going to change the EQ on this when I mix, but I've got a boost right now at uh, 30 hertz, 2 dB. And a 2 dB top boost here up at 3K. So it's just a little bit of a smiley face. Uh, there's also a cool tube boost knob. So we're going to hear these two processors in. Again, they're only on the instrumental. And then... We're going to strap a bunch of other fun stuff across the bus since we use a bunch of saturator plugins and EQs and other cool hype tools. I have some very special things in. So today with me, I have one of two in the world. I've got the grill by Hendy Amps with Mauer Applebaum mastering. Um, this thing is insane. I've just been playing around with it uh, and they sent it to me to try out. This is a really, really incredible versatile box for mixing and this thing does a lot of stuff. So this is kind of intimidating. So let me just walk you through it real quick. Um, you've got these two different types of saturation, and I'm not going to screw around with all these little like alternate versions of it today. Um, I've got it kind of dialed in where I think it's going to work totally for this mix, but I've got this blaze. This is one type of saturation and this grill, which is another type of saturation that adds like a lot of mid density. You've got the burners, which basically you can think of EQs like lows, mids, highs, um, frizzle. That's like an air band. And then this flow knob is simply a volume knob. You know, it's like output gain. So again, you got two saturators, you've got an EQ section, you've got uh, an error EQ, and then you've got this flow knob, which is basically a gain. So we're going to be using a lot of this for sure top down because this is going to replace a lot of the top down processing we are using in the box, like Saturn and things like that. Now, this is also hooked up into, I have this API 2500 bus compressor. This is also going to get hooked up. Um, I've got this on an insert so we can compare it. So the chain is it goes this into the grill and then into a transformer. We'll talk about the transformer here in a second, but I just have this on like a 3MS attack, uh, 1.5 to 1 ratio, like a 0.2 release, hard knee, medium, and new style compression. It, it's just kind of there for glue. You know, think about this as like a glue compressor, if that makes a little bit of sense. You'll hear it when we throw it in. And then off the back of this, which you can't see because I'm not getting under this rack, forgive me, um, I have a pair of Focusrite transformers off with a Focusrite console that have been boxed up and wired up by my tech that I throw on the back of my mix bus because they've got a really awesome sound. Uh, they're almost impossible to get and um, they sound really, really cool. So the top down chain is gonna be the 2500. Um, it's gonna be hardwired into the grill uh, for saturation and EQ. And then that's gonna come over here and then that's gonna get a transformer from the Focusrite console. And then it's gonna come off the output and get captured back by my AD. Um, the only other thing that I've got on there on the Master Fader is the S, uh, SSL style compressor, which I have some crazy weird settings on. And this is just in there for a little bit of glue. I have a high pass at like 300. I'm not even really compressing with this. A 0.2 release is almost the same as the API. A 0.3, uh, sorry, a 3 millisecond attack. Um, I, you know, I, I barely even tap this. It just sounds better with it on. So that is the top down mixing chain. Okay, now we're gonna mix this song. So what I'm gonna do is let's get a good fader balance going. Now I warn you, I'm a lot slower on the board because I've only been doing it here for a couple of months um, than I am with a mouse because I've got about 20 plus years on that. So bear with me, here we go. Let's get this thing balanced. And then once we've got it balanced, we'll start adding top down stuff.
Real quick note, I do have a limiter on this just for volume so I can get this up to kind of match my vocal level here. Um, I wouldn't, I don't have like an analog limiter or anything like that. I guess I can clip my converter, so I'm just using flat line too because it's quick and easy to just smash this stuff up. That is the only plugin we're using. Um, I guess if I want to do it totally hardware, I could just totally smash the input off the console of the AD. Okay, we've got a basic instrumental balance going here. So let's go turn the bus compressor on and see what that sounds like. You can immediately hear that there's a little bit of extra glue that's kind of come in. Let's have a listen. And I'm just adjusting a couple of levels here on the drums, the guitars, etc. Now that the bus compressor is kind of changing those relationships a little bit. Also a note, it's probably best to usually do this during the densest part of the song. So now that we've kind of got that worked out, let's get a little bit of vocals going and see what that sounds like. So let's back it up to like the verse. I'm going to bring in some drum reverb here in the small fader. Okay, vocal sounds a little bit dry, so let's hear some effects. Information from a bottle. Starting with the lexicon. Information from a bottle. Not too much to comprehend. No answers. Bring in the eclipse, which is going to be the stereo widener. Let's get the line six delay. Information from a bottle. Not too much to comprehend. Throw a little bit of the slap in. Information from a bottle. Not too much to comprehend. Is like broken glass and portal. And last but not least, I'm going to take the SPX and uh, throw a little bit of stereo width on the bass. Information from a 
It's subtle, but it does a thing. Information from a bottle. Not too much to okay, let's go to the chorus and get these auxiliary vocals mixed in. Okay, we've got a decent little bit of fader of balance. Let's start doing some more top-down mixing. This mix obviously needs a lot of EQ and a lot of hype. So let's go throw that EQ on the instrumental bus from before. So first thing, I'm going to turn it on and off. And now we're going to have a listen to the tube boost on and off. That definitely brought up the level of the instrumental a little bit. So let me jack up the vocals and get a little bit of extra um, volume out of them. Okay, cleaning up a little bit of leveling here. Information from a bottle. Not too much to comprehend. And no answers lie in broken glass and boredom. Reigniting branches that. And after this, I We're getting there for balance wise. Now let's go throw the fun stuff on. Here we go. Let's take a look at this stack I was talking about earlier. So like I said, I wired this up here on a hardware insert on the master bus. So we can kind of audition it again. This is the API 2500 compressor. It's the grill from ND Amps with our Apple bomb mastering. And it's that focus right transformer off the console. So let's hear it on and off with everything kind of slightly engaged. The compressor is on the transformer, obviously the hand by default, it's not like a box or anything. It just goes through it. And then I've got the Hendy amps grill set at neutral. So here's what it does top down style to the actual mix. And on the API, we're kissing the meter by about a dB with the additional compression. So we're not really doing that much additional compression. So you can hear it just kind of spreads it out. It saturates it. It puts everything in its place. It really helps bring this together. And we haven't even started playing with the heavy hitting stuff. So that's pretty powerful. That sounds pretty amazing. You know, again, this in the box... My equivalent to this would be maybe using like a Saturn and a Max Bass and a Lin Multiband or something like that. Um, this is the analog version of it, which is totally different set of tools, but it got me adding a lot of saturation and compression. Not quite level matched. I mean, I guess I could bring the output level up a little bit. You can clearly hear what that does, and it sounds awesome. So let's head over to the box here and go play around with that grill and see what happens. Now we're at the grill. Let's play along with this thing a little bit. The first thing I want to do is add a little bit of top end to this mix. So let's listen. I'm gonna head back to my actual listening position and just have a listen real quickly and we're gonna compare it before and after. Yeah. 
That really opened that mix up. That sounds great. Okay, so now let's maybe do a little bit of a mid cut. I think it needs a little bit more bottom and a little bit less mid. Listen, how much chunk that adds in the bass. I'm going to head back to my listening position because that's halfway across the room and listen very carefully. Let's compare before and after. Okay, I disagree about the mid cut. So let's go back over here and readjust that and maybe do a mid push. All right, let me hear that back in my position. I was playing around with the different types of wool cut and boost, or sorry, min boost there. There's like two switches. Okay, that's sounding way better. Okay, now let's head over and play with a little bit of the saturation and pull what we can get out of the grill. This should add some low mid density. Okay, that's nice. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of the blaze. So let's see what that does. All right, let's pop it in and out and see what it sounds like. Check it out in the verse. No answers lie in broken glass and boredom. I love how much bottom end energy that thing has. It just really locks the bottom end and the lower mid range just kind of like gives it this push and pull where the kick and the bass lock and it's it's nice. No answers lie broken glass and boredom. Okay, now I want to do something real quick. I'm going to go back, turn off all the top down stuff. So basically what I did is I just turned off the amperage EQ and the hardware compressor and I bypassed the compressor. Let's print this with no top down mixing and then hear what it sounds like before and after. This will be kind of fun. Okay, now at this point in the mix, I would definitely go through and clean a few things up and balance everything out, but we've been pretty long today, so I'm not gonna do that. But what is gonna be fun, the last thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna go compare this to the top-down print I did when I did the in-the-box mix the other day. Now, this is gonna sound radically different, so let me first match the level.
right. It's actually pretty pretty level match. What's interesting to me is how much saturation and um, compression and things like that and like harmonic synthesis I have on the in the box mix because I have a lot more plugins than I do hardware. But it's a totally different type of energy and movement. So listen. Given we have an entirely different balance today, too. If I was comparing, I would definitely turn on my bass low end a little bit more. like totally flattened out all the dynamic energy in the in the box mix like there's none of it it's completely non-existent where here you can actually feel the movement sits with like a lot more space and a lot more clarity If you enjoy this, drop me a comment below and uh, we'll do some more of it and lots of other fun mixing things. I'm definitely also going to do more mixing and I'll break some stuff out on the SSL. That is coming. I know a lot of you have it requested it. So thank you so much for watching. Please click the notification, like, and subscribe because I'm doing videos every two weeks here on YouTube. And of course, if you want to learn how to mix, head over to nailthemix.com. Happy mixing, everybody.